morning, everyone, and uh, thank you very much for joining me. This is the Morning Market Review. My name is Russell Shaw. I'm a Senior Market Specialist at FXM. My email address is rshaw at fxm.com. Today is Wednesday. It's the 22nd of March, 2023. Just going to go ahead and bring up our high-risk investment warning. Uh, just a few things in terms of housekeeping. Um, so next week I'm away. Uh, that's number one, but I'm, I'm actually leaving this Friday, so there, there won't be a. So from this Friday to the following Friday, there won't be any uh, webinars, and then we'll start again from Monday. I think it's the third. From Monday the third, we'll start again. Uh, it's also there'll be um, a change in um, in time in Europe. I think it happens this weekend, I believe. Um, so. Um, it shouldn't so anybody in the northern hemisphere shouldn't be affected but anyone in Z, ZA it will be moving an hour earlier so just uh, remember that uh, I'll just keep the high-risk investment warning on for a few moments more uh, can I just confirm um, that you guys can see me hear me and uh, see the screen I'll bring up the market commentaries disclaimer okay cool thanks thanks Jared Rick Hey Anna, morning to you. Nice to have you on the webinar as always. Thank you everyone for joining this morning. Um, so today is going to be an interesting day. We're going to have the Fed rate uh, decision uh, later uh, this evening. I think it's at 6 p.m. UK, which would be 8 p.m. ZA. And if you take, if we take a look at the CME Group uh, uh, website, specifically the CME FedWatch tool, we're now priced in a close to 90% of 25 basis points. So in two days, it's it's gone from sort of 50-50 uh, through to uh, uh, 90%. So we probably get the, the 25 basis point hike. Um, I think that's a testament to the fact that there's some stability coming back into the uh, market, but um, we'll just have to keep an eye on that. Um, what we could do is just keep an eye on the um, two-year uh, the two-year note, which has already started uh, pricing upwards. Can you see how markets are forward-looking? So you've got a um, you've got a dragonfly doji here on Monday. Then yesterday you've got the market pricing in um, the rate increase. You can see the yields being pushed up. I've got the U.S. dollar um, in the um, second chart and then I've got the correlation coefficient between the two there's a very strong correlation coefficient at 76 percent so the dollar moves uh, fairly much in line with uh, the two-year yield at this stage in other words it's really Fed policy which is driving the markets it's, it's the major driver of the market at the moment so we're just going to keep an eye on um, the dot plots okay so what's going to happen to, to uh, today is we're going to get the dot plots which are effectively uh, forecasts by the FOMC members of where they see interest rates heading over the uh, sort of future periods. So keep an eye on that, guys, because that's going to drive markets um, as well. It will, it will drive the yields and it will potentially drive um, US dollar. You can see US dollar is positively correlated, as opposed to, as opposed to, let's just bring in um, NASDAQ here. Let's just type in NAS 100. Okay, and bring up the uh, chart you can see, and uh, let's just change the correlation coefficient here from dollar to NAS 100 as well. And you can see that whereas we had a positive 76, we've got a negative 55%, right? So you can see that the NASDAQ is inversely correlated to the two yield. So what, what are we saying? We're saying we want to watch the dot plots. We want to see how the US two yield reacts to the dot plots. And then based on the correlation coefficients, uh, we'll see whether the US dollar gets pulled up or pushed down, or whether say the NASDAQ gets pulled up or pushed down. Um, but the analysis is all going to start here with the two year, and we're going to see how that discounts. Um, Let's just take a look now at the DAX and the Euro, just to do some top-down analysis there. And um, 
what we have here is the DAX weekly chart. I've put in a 30-week moving average, which is um, Stan Weinstein's moving average. And you can see how we pull back and hit that 30-week twice. We hit it once over here. We hit it once over here. And um, it seems to be acting as um, a support. Um, regardless of the, uh, let's take it out, regardless of that, uh, moving average. Let's take a look at it, I think, in terms of peaks and troughs, which is my preferred method of looking at trends. So we've got a trough, okay, we've got a peak, okay, and then guess what? Right at that support, we've got the higher trough. Now we've got the higher peak over there. And once we've got these labels in, you can see this looks to me, uh, we're still going to have to put HT question mark, but it looks to me as if we're getting the uh, next higher trough. How are we going to uh, how are we going to tell? We're going to take a look at next week's price action. So we'll only be able to do that on Monday the 3rd, but we want to see if we get the reference candle reversal. Okay, so in other words, we want to see if we get the lowest low lowest low and then next week's candle we want effectively to take out this week's high and we want it to close above this week's high and then we can take that question mark out then it looks like we've got higher trough in and uh, what's so uh, interesting about uh, the higher troughs in an uptrend well let's just bring up Microsoft Paint and just remind ourselves that these are the areas where we want to try and exploit Okay, it's these pullbacks in the uptrend which are of tremendous interest. Let's make it red, 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 and then of course pullback. And now we are looking to see if we can get the next dip in the uptrend. See the dips in the uptrend here. Now what's interesting is if we take a look at the RSR, I like, I like taking a look at the RSI in reference to 50, okay? So uh, if you take a look at this period here, it was below 50. Well, that was bearish pressure, okay? Now, where's the RSI? It's above 50. I don't really look at the divergences. I don't think the divergences are as uh, potent as uh, where the RSI is relative to 50. And when we get it above 50, Look at, we're getting a nice real movement up here. And now we wanted to see if it maintains above 50. Okay, so the DAX here are looking quite uh, interesting indeed. If we go through to our daily chart here, we did draw in the support level uh, a few days ago and it did drop quite viciously below it, but it is a actual, it turned into a buying tail, didn't it? This is a, a, a hammer. You can see that the, Bears pushed the um, price all the way to that day's low. The bears lose control and the bulls just completely take over. And not only have they taken over, yesterday there's a gap open, a gap open, and we've pushed up. So what do we have here on the daily chart? Well, you should, you should see the reference candle. Can you guys see it? So on the daily, we've got the reference candle. So yesterday, yesterday is actually is like that. That's very that, that's very strong in in my eyes. So I want to keep an eye on that. Let's take a look at it in terms of the um, in terms of the zones, and you can see that we've pushed now out of zone three. We've pushed into zone two. So let's just label the zones. Zone one is really where the growth takes place. Okay. Zone three is where the value is represented based on the uh, primary trend. Well, we know the primary trend on the weekly was up. Okay, so that, that was the value. And then we've pushed into zone two now. Okay, and a movement from the week into neutral. Well, that's a relative step forward, isn't it? So uh, the next objective is for the stochastic to make its way to 80 and for the uh, candlestick to make it into zone one. If we can get that, uh, then we're moving into potentially 
the higher trough, higher peak, potentially. Okay, so we've got to just keep an eye on this. See, now what's interesting here is we've got all these bullish signs that have come in, but we've got this red candle. So now this red candle, well, that's interesting because that's the potential dip in the uptrend. We go down to the hourly, and I think what's going to be very interesting, we're going to get the open in the next 10 minutes. I think S1 here is potentially something for us to keep an eye on. It's a, a resistance turn support with an overlap on, on S1. Um, of course, the central pivot may act as uh, support. I'm not certain it will, but what we've got to take a look at is effectively trigger one, trigger two. So you can see how the uh, the DAX here is looking uh, very, very interesting. Um, and uh, this has certainly been one that we focused on um, for uh, the last few months and the reason that we focused on it for the last few months is because this trend here to me is one of the strongest trends out in terms of just um, how steep it is if we have to take a look say at the nasdaq if we bring up the nasdaq we don't have the trend as steep as this so you bring up the nasdaq 100 and you can see it's a much uh, it's a much softer trend the trend, the, the trend is sort of, I don't know, let's call that 35 degrees, 30 degrees, and you go through back to the, go through to the DAX, and uh, I would say we've got something sort of close to, um, sort of, uh, maybe 45 degrees. So it's, it's a really, it's a nice, strong looking trend. So uh, we want to keep an eye on that. Um, another one uh, we want to do is just the Euro US dollar. Let's just bring that up. Okay. And again, this is looking uh, very interesting. Uh, we've got the peaks and troughs already labeled in. Okay. So higher trough, higher peak, higher trough, higher peak. Uh, this looks very interesting to me. Higher, uh, higher trough. I'm going to keep the, I'm going to keep the question mark in here, and I'm going to keep an eye on it from here. So we've got uh, three days worth of trade to see if the uh, euro US dollar can close above uh, last week's high. Now, this is going to be very much a function of what happens in the Fed. Uh, released today, so we can this one we can look at again tomorrow, and we'll see how it looks. But uh, take a look at the RSI here. Okay, when the RSI is below 50, it's telling you that the tr momentum is down. When it is above 50, it's telling you that the momentum is up. Okay, so we we nicely up uh, 50 here. So uh, euro US dollar looking very interesting indeed in terms of primary trend. And uh, if we take a look at this in terms of zones, well, this is where it gets uh, interesting again. It's this is in zone one, so it's in the growth area. Take a look at those Bollinger bands starting to pull away. So there is certainly some sort of volatility. There's a volatility expansion here in the um, in the Bollingers, uh, very much going to be influenced by what happens today. Very much going to be influenced by what happens today. So just uh, keep keep that in mind. Take a look at the um, take a look at the stochastic. Stochastics almost hit that upper quintile on a daily chart. See the daily chart. If we can get into the daily and hold those upper quintiles, then we get some really fantastic movements in terms of swings. So we're getting a very very interesting looking movement here now again uh, it's looking positive but we've got some red okay what we can, what we can do is we can take a look at these support levels now there has to be something said about uh, euro US dollar trading uh, ahead of a Fed announcement trading ahead of a Fed announcement is of course very risky so even if it pulls back towards the s1 and we get some sort of signals here signal one, Signal two, that can change in a heartbeat depending on what comes out of the Fed. The Fed communication here is going to be exceptionally uh, important for us to to keep um, abreast of. But you can see that any sort of pullback here towards the first support is the 
central pivot. Second support is the S1, okay? So we can kind of just keep an eye on those two levels and then see if the short-term traders synchronize up with the daily traders. And you can see the daily traders here have pushed it into, uh, into the zone one with nice expansions to the to the upside. So we've got some very interesting uh, charts uh, to take a look at. Um, one more chart to look at and then we'll uh, uh, wind up because we'll go through to the, um, the crypto minute. Uh, pound US dollar. So um, there was a surprise um, surprise release, uh, um, CPI release. So CPI came in ahead of, uh, came in uh, in double digits again this morning. It was forecast to be below the double digits. Uh, you can see that uh, pound US dollar, uh, what we've got, okay, we've got the higher, uh, sorry, we've got the uh, the reference candle in here. It's pushing up. Take a look at your RSI here. RSI is starting to push up by 50. Take a look at the day chart. We've gone into zone one. Where's that stochastic? The stochastic is right in the uh, uh, right in the upper quintile. The longer it stays here, the higher the um, uh, the uh, support, uh, the more support there's going to be for the cable pairing. Uh, Bank of England is coming out tomorrow. I reckon with the uh, inflation that came out today, we're looking 25 basis points there. Um, I think that. Uh, you can see the movement up here. Here is trigger one, trigger two. It's worth just seeing if it is going to hang around this area. Okay, if it hangs around this area, uh, then there's perhaps something to build on here. Again, there is a huge, huge announcement today, the Fed announcement. So any position you're taking is going to have a risk of higher volatility. Higher volatility means you must have Stop losses, you always got to have stop losses. You always got to take uh, risk management into account. Uh, it's a very, uh, it's going to be a very volatile day, especially at 6 p.m. UK, 8 p.m. ZA. That's when the Fed announcement is coming out. Uh, look for those dot plots, guys. Those dot plots are going to be uh, very important for us. All right, uh, we're going to end here and we'll move through to our uh, crypto minute. Uh, if there's any questions, we've got uh, one minute left here. If there's any questions, just go ahead and type those in. Any uh, questions, uh, go ahead and type those in. Just, um, again, I want to just re-emphasize, guys, today is uh, going to be a volatile day, uh, especially later in the day. Um, I th in fact, I would suggest um, the volatility comes in at the at the announcement. All right, nothing come. No, no comments. So let's uh, wrap up here. We'll do uh, the crypto minute uh, next. Thank you very much, guys.